All right, detecting comparability graphs. Given a graph G, how hard is it to determine whether G is a comparability graph? We start with the observation that just like cover graphs, the question is in NP because for a yes answer, there's an easily testable certificate. Oh, I see a typo. In the uh, observation in the, in the middle, it's not that there's a certificate for an answer. There's a certificate for a yes answer. Is that clear? There's a certificate for a yes answer. There's not a certificate for a no answer. At least, we don't see how to do it immediately. In certain very special cases, there's a certificate for a no answer. For example, the odd cycle, C5, is not a comparability graph. Now, I'm going to make that statement. What I'd like you to do is to see if you can verify why there is no poset whose comparability graph is a five cycle. So take your notes, take your papers, talk to your friends, and see if you can explain why there is no poset whose cover graph is C5. So, I'm sorry, one quick question. The odd cycle, is it just having each point adjacent? That's all, that, and those edges and no others. Okay. No others. Exactly those edges and no others. I'm seeing lots of blank faces. Not 100% compelling, but you're, you're in the right neighborhood. You're in the right neighborhood. <clears throat> OK, let's look at E and A, for example. E and A. In the post set, they have to be comparable. Now. If you take a poset and it has a comparability graph, and you turn the poset upside downwards, what's that do to the comparability graph? Nothing. Nothing. Watch this, hand waving. Poset, comparability graph. Turn the poset upside downwards, what happens to this? Nothing. Two points are comparable. If and only if it just change, it interchanges bigger than for less than. That's all it does. So if A and E are comparable, I might as well assume that A is less than E. Now, I'm, I'm drawing it like it's a cover, but I don't know that. There, there might be more points in between, but A is under E. Now, look at E and D. E and D are comparable. So either E is over D or E is under D. Which way is it? And this is back to your point now. 
if a, I've got E is over A, and I've got E is comparable with D. Is D over E or under E? If D is over E, up here, then D is over A. But D and A are not comparable. So it has to turn around and go down to get to D. Again, I don't know whether this is a cover. There might be more points in here, but it has to go down. Now, is C going further down or back up? It has to go up. Because if C is down here, then C is comparable with E. You see that? If C is down here, then C is less than D, and D is less than E, then C would be less than E. But C and E are incomparable. So C has to turn around and go back up. Well, then D has to turn around and go back down. Okay. Now you have to get back to A. So B has got to be comparable with A. If B is over A, then if B is over A, no, I left out and D and B, this is C. If B is over A, then C is over A, and it isn't. If B is under A, then E is over B, and it isn't. So no way to, no way to get the comparability between B and A. Okay, now I didn't say that was obvious. I'm just saying the referee could check this out. You explain it to the referee, the referee listens. Well, actually, you've got a point there, you're right. So if the graph is a C5 with no quartz, no other edges, then the graph is not a comparability graph. And in fact, if it contains a C5 as an induced subgraph, it's not a comparability graph. But what happens if it doesn't? Then are we stuck in the same situation as before? Is this an NP complete problem? And the theorem is no. There's a very efficient algorithm for testing whether or not G is a comparability graph. This test has been around for oh, 30, 40 years. But when it was first discovered, and it was, dis it was discovered in equivalent forms by many people, this was before the issue of complexity was, was uh, part of our discussion. And so it's, it's pretty difficult to, uh, to say who's actually responsible. If you check this on the web and ask uh, Google who, who first settle the uh, complexity of is the graph comparability graph, you'll be probably taking to an Israeli computer scientist slash mathematician named Marty Golumbic, M.C. Golumbic. <laughs> but uh, Marty would say uh, it's not really his result. He's just stating formally uh, what is clear from other people's work. Now, we're going to develop this algorithm. It's not going to be totally trivial. It's going to take a little time. But when we're finished, you'll be able to feel confident that if you're given the data set for a graph of modest size, you can do it by hand. And for huge size, you could write a little program, which is about yay big. And that program will do it. But right now, you couldn't write a program this big to do the Dilworth problem. That seems to be much harder. 